It's all been for nothing. It's all been for nothing. There's no waste of time and effort and energy. Do you ever feel that way? Do you ever get discouraged in sharing the gospel and feel it's all just been a waste? Maybe some of you around Christmas time, you look at the church building and you think back to Christmases when it was full. And you wonder to yourself, has it all been for nothing? All the time and effort poured into Christ Lutheran Church. Has it been for nothing? Maybe you've personally felt that way. After spending a lot of time encouraging and, and supporting a friend, and maybe even inviting them several times to church, and all of that effort is, is deflected with a simple, well, thank you. Have you ever felt it's just all been for nothing? I wonder if those Israelites felt that. We heard at the end of chapter 1 of Haggai how they were, were inspired by that message from Haggai to go and to start to work on the temple of the Lord. They began to rebuild that house of God. And yet, despite their zeal to see the work done, their desire and their drive to rebuild that magnificent structure, when they looked at it and they saw the repair work going on, they could tell this temple, it's not going to be anything like the original. It's going to fall far short in beauty and majesty. It's not going to have the same gold-plated walls. It's not going to have all of the same decorations and grandeur as when Solomon initially constructed that temple. It's all for nothing. It's a waste of time. It's all going to just turn out to be lackluster. As those Israelites rebuilt that temple and perhaps wrestled with those feelings of it's all for nothing, it's all a waste of our time, listen to how the Lord encouraged them and reminded them that even though physically that rebuilt temple was not going to be able to compare with the, the site of Solomon's work, that temple would be more glorious than Solomon's temple. Because the desire of all nations, the treasure that brings wealth to all nations, the Savior Jesus, would walk the courts of that temple and carry out his ministry. The ministry pictured by the sacrifices in that temple. The work of a sacrifice that washes away sin. Despite how those Israelites felt that all their efforts were cursed and doomed to failure, Listen to how God promised to pour out his blessings on them. That same message that Isaiah or that was that Haggai shared with those Israelites, it encourages us. Because when we feel discouraged that our labor in the Lord has been for nothing, we can remember that it is never in vain. A lesson from Haggai chapter 2. In the seventh month, on the twenty-first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet. Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to all the remnant of the people, and say, Who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory? How do you see it now? Is it not as nothing in your eyes? And yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord. Work, for I am with you, declares the Lord of hosts, according to the covenant that I made with you when you came out of Egypt. My spirit remains in your midst. Fear not, for thus says the Lord of hosts. Yet once more, in a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations so that the treasures of all nations shall come in, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. 
The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. The latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. On the 24th day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came, to, came by Haggai the prophet. Thus says the Lord of hosts, ask the priests about the law. If someone carries holy meat in the fold of his garment and touches with his fold bread or stew or wine or oil or any kind of food, does it become holy? The priests answered and said, no. Then Haggai said, if someone who is unclean by contact with a dead body touches any of these, does it become unclean? The priests answered and said, it does become unclean. Then Haggai answered and said, so it is with this people and with this nation before me, declares the Lord, and so with every work of their hands. And what they offer here there is unclean. Now then, consider from this day onward, before stone was placed upon stone in the temple of the Lord, how did you fare when one came to a heap of twenty measures? There were but ten. When one came to the wine vat to draw fifty measures, there were but twenty. I struck you and all the products of your toil with blight and with mildew and with hail, yet you did not turn to me, declares the Lord. Consider from this day onward, from the twenty-fourth day of the ninth month, since the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider, is the seed yet in the barn? Indeed, the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have yielded nothing, but from this day on I will bless you. The word of the Lord came a second time to Haggai on the 24th day of the month. Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I am about to shake the heavens and the earth and to overthrow the throne of kingdoms. I am about to destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the nations and overthrow the chariots and their riders and the horses and their riders shall go down every one by the sword of his brother. On that day, declares the Lord of hosts, I will take you, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtiel, declares the Lord, and make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, declares the Lord of hosts. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for prayer.